Hey, this is Snowblitz. Six Stream. Starlight Ironhoof. Forest Rain. And Zeta Prime. And this is Elements of Harmony. Tonight on the show, we're featuring Fritzy Beat, a musician who burst out into the brony music scene in late 2013 with his hit song, Oxygen, which was also the first pony song he ever released. Not only an awesome vocalist, Fritzy is a talented cartoonist, and he joins us here tonight. Fritzy Beat! Yeah! Good evening, Fritzy. Hey there, Fritzy, how's it going? It's about time we got you on here. <laughs> yeah, for real. Yeah, no kidding. I was looking forward to this. <laughs> so, yeah, you've been a fan of the show for a little while, haven't you? Since, I believe, episode two, I've been following it. Wow. Ooh. But, if I'm correct, you did miss one of our episodes. For shame. I'm sorry. I can't catch all of them. <laughs> well... So tonight we are now welcoming the Living Tombstone onto the show. Bye, Fritzy. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh my god. Why is Tomb our go-to for that? Like, anytime we're like, all right, and... I don't know. Probably because we haven't had him on yet. Yeah, probably. probably. Will we ever? To do list. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, well, it, anything is possible. Anyways. So, Fritzy, how are you tonight? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I'm doing quite all right. Thanks for asking the rest of us, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. Yeah, I know. We've been doing just fine. <laughs> hey, hey, we're interviewing Fritzy here, not Forrest Rain. She's Forrest. You have your. Are you sure Forrest's a lot more interesting than I am? Can't we just interview him? <laughs> I don't think we've had him on the show yet. I mean, he's kind of on every show. In fact, I think he's the only host that has been on every show. Yeah, true story. After I missed that one episode, yeah. Yeah. So one of the interesting things about Fritzy is that, like, a lot of the awesome musicians in the fandom, he lives in Canada. <gasps> Canada. Ooh. Oh, Canada. I don't know any awesome musicians in Canada. All the awesome musicians are in Canada. <laughs> Equestrian Lord. What's oh. Canadia? Okay. Yeah. You got me there. Yeah. yeah. But not that forest drain guy. Wait, who? Whatever. But yes. Fritzy, where in Canada do you live? I live in Saskatchewan, actually. The middle of nowhere. Mm. Oh, fun. Ooh. It's like the Iowa of Canada. Yeah, except 50,000 times bigger. So we got Equestrian Lord living on the east and Forrest living on the west. Nope. Or backwards. Equestrian Lord is on the west coast. Yeah, they're on the west coast. You're on the east coast. And I'm sandwiched right in the middle. Yeah, I'm not in a coast. I'm in the most American part of Canada. Southwestern Ontario. I have a question about Saskatchewan. Is it true that if you light a match when it's dry there, you'll set the entire province ablaze? Oh, uh, when it isn't snowing absolutely everywhere, sure. <laughs> awesome. Well, at least it's the Iowa of Canada, not the Ohio of Canada. Ah, uh, this is true. Let's not think about <laughs> that. Let's move on from there. Yeah, before we, before we get like some angry people attacking yep. us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a bunch of people from Ohio just come up, we hate elements of harmony. <laughs> nah, they all hate Ohio too. That's where I learned my Ohio hate from. <laughs> <laughs> so Fritzy, before we get into the music, let's just talk about it real quick. You've been trying to be a freelance art cartoonist, is that correct? That is correct, actually, for quite a while now. Um, I started cartooning back in... Who a long time ago, and I've been sending in a lot of portfolios and stuff. I've gotten in with actually a, some cool animation projects recently, and I'm hoping to become a professional cartoonist someday, yeah. What animation projects are you involved with if you're able to talk about them? Mm, I think Zeta could probably tell you more about that than I could. Oh, yeah. Well, this isn't Zeta's interview, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if I should be holding my tongue or not. Eh, yeah, it might be best for now. 
Okay. Well, one of the things that I notice when reviewing you is you're following an interesting trend of musicians lately where you only got into the fandom late October 2013. Is that correct? Yeah, just late October. What was it like jumping into the pony music scene and producing music in something that's already really saturated? Honestly, I had no idea what I was getting into. I had just discovered the show like a few weeks before and I was like, hey, there's some people making music. I can make music too, maybe. So um, I got together with a good friend of mine, Alex Reed, or Almost Anyone, as he's known as, and I just started writing some songs and throwing them up on YouTube and seeing what happened. And then somebody actually messaged me on Skype saying, dude, your song made it to Equestria Daily. And I was like, oh, what's that? I don't know. I I know nothing about this fandom. I literally only heard a few songs up to that point about ponies, and I was inspired, so I wrote stuff. Oh, hey, that's awesome. I always love meeting people who joined the music scene later on. It's funny, too, because it's like the exact same story as the rest of us. It's like no matter when we actually stepped into the fandom, we all kind of have the same sort of story. It's just, you know, discover the show, really like it, get into it. And then within like a couple of weeks, it's like, ah, oh, let's start doing music for it. Because like, apparently that's a thing. Well, I was surprised. So first, so you were doing music before you joined the fandom? No, not really. I mean, I had done a couple covers and stuff and just thrown them up on SoundCloud and my old YouTube. But I'd never actually done anything original up to that point. And like the old saying, well, not really old saying, but like they say in the pony fandom, you just, you get inspired by those little ponies. I don't know what it is. Is there anything in particular that inspired you? Um, I'm really not sure what it was, actually. I mean, like, I first, I got into the show, I found out there was this huge, or not really huge at the time, I didn't know it was huge at the time, but there was this music community, and I decided, well, maybe I'll make something too. And I just started writing whatever came to mind. I guess while we're still on the subject of fandom and musicians and stuff like that, do you have any artists from inside the fandom that you draw inspiration from? Everyone. Everyone? Just everyone. My iTunes playlist of brony music is literally overflowing. I have so much, and I just, I try to listen to as much pony music as I can, try to catch everything that comes out, because, I don't know, I really enjoy pony music, it's cool and blah. <laughs> How many weeks of listening to straight pony music without any sleep or meals did it take to get caught up? Honestly, I'm still kind of catching up. I'm still finding all of the lesser known musicians from like 2011. I'll eventually get there though. I'm getting there. One day, every brony song. (laughs) Everyone! (laughs) Eventually. Someday. Someday. That's actually becoming quite a feat. Considering they had the MLP Music Archive, which, back when I decided to download it in, I don't know, the end of 2012, was already like several hundred gigabytes. I downloaded it just before BernieCon this last year, and it had like over 6,000 songs in it. Yeah. Okay, wow. That's like (laughs) more than my entire music library. Out of those 6,000 songs, I think like 3,000 of them are like covers of other songs that already existed. Yeah, the the songs just keep piling up. They really are. There's like a thousand Rainbow Factory covers. (laughs) I would have guessed Loyalty. Ah, so many. Hey, don't forget the Discord and Beyonder Garden covers. Yep, but uh, yeah, no, no, it's cool that that you've kind of immersed yourself in fandom music. And has it been sort of like a completely immersive thing in that you've completely drowned yourself in the episodes from the show and sort of live in that world? And does all of the sort of fanon play into your inspirations for stuff now? Yeah, I'd say it does. There's a lot of fanon that becomes really inspirational. Most of my inspiration, though, I try to draw from the show because that's what got me into the music to begin with. And... There's just so much to draw from in the show. You think of just the smallest thing that was featured maybe for five seconds in the show. Like, let's say, I guess even just the Rainbow Factory. That was what featured for three minutes in one of the episodes. And look what that turned into. Yeah. Or even background characters for that matter. Yeah. Like Octavia. Carrot Top, Octavia. Yeah. They're pretty much, yeah. Final Scratch. So Fritzy, do you have a favorite episode? Or an episode that you feel inspired you the most so far? 
I do. And that was the episode that made me decide I wanted to be a brony. That was Feeling Pinky Keen is still the most fun I've ever had watching a My Little Pony episode. Really? I find that really interesting because when it came out, I remembered a lot of backlash against that episode. I enjoyed it personally, but a lot of people were like, this is the worst thing ever. I think it's one of the more underrated episodes. I really don't think that because it reminded me of like Looney Tunes feeling to it a little bit. Yeah. Like Anvil's phone, Anvil's pianos, various other. Yeah. 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 With pianos falling on things. Yeah. Derpy yeah. dropped a piano. Yeah, Derpy. Seriously, how can you not like that? Yeah, wasn't that the entire thing that... The pinky sense. It was about the pinky sense. Yes, the pinky sense. No, 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 never mind. I'm dumb. No, I was going to ask if that was the episode that spawned Derpy that I just remembered, and I'm sorry. No, the first episode did. Come on. I apologize. You fail. No, you fail as a brony. I know. Oh, man. Am I fired again? Yes. Yes, you're fine. Maybe. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, back to music. Do you have any uh, outside fandom inspiration you want to talk about? I do, and I knew this was coming. Uh, <laughs> yes. Because everybody already knows. It's a trap. There's mm-hmm. a musician by the name of Adam Young. Maybe you've heard of him. Sings a song, you would not believe your <laughs> eyes. If 10 million fight, I think you know it. Yeah, Owl City is definitely... I... (laughs) Forest Rain has already left the conversation. (laughs) See you later! Yes, I knew it was coming. (laughs) Owl City is one of my... I'm sorry, I baited you into that trap. (laughs) (laughs) One of my biggest inspirations. One of my favorite musicians, but also actually a musician I've known for a lot longer. Just to get off Owl City, because we've done that to death. You guys have done that to death. I know. I've watched every episode. <laughs> yeah. By to death, we killed it the moment it came out. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we only actually mentioned it in one episode. but I don't know. But actually, another musician that's really inspired me over the years that I've been listening to for pretty much my whole life is Matthew Thiessen from Reliant K. Ooh, that's all right. There we go. And yes, he yes. has a he, range. Really? Oh, yeah, they are They're a big. Love Reliant K. No, I almost said they're a big <laughs> fan of me. Yes, no, I'm a big fan of them. (laughs) (laughs) Been listening to them since forever, and it's their lyrics, actually, that inspire most of my lyrics. Like, I want to write a song, pull out some Reliant K music, get some inspiration, hear some puns in their lyrics. (laughs) Get funny. Yeah, they have those those interesting um, song titles. Crayons can melt in us for all I care. Yeah. Best song. (laughs) Funny thing is, is actually, I wanted to bring up Owl City just because right before the interview started, we were listening to some of your stuff just to get acquainted with it and get it fresh in our mind. And they linked me your new song that just came out mm-hmm. today as of recording. And it was today, right? I'm not misinformed. Yep. Yesterday. It was yesterday, but since this episode is going to be in the future. So yesterday as of recording, but I said it sounds like Owl City, except it's good. Good as in the vocalist is good. <laughs> That's accurate. Yay! <laughs> Life goal completed! I think I copied that over to Fritzy and showed him that comment. <laughs> yeah. It's true, though. Like, it, it is. It does have that vibe, but it is really good. And then I think somebody else pointed out right after was that, um, Fritzy, you actually did a mashup with um, an Owl City song, didn't you? I did, actually. I was... It's a bit of a funny story. I was surfing the web, as I always do, and uh, I was listening to Faster Than You Know by Black Griffin. And I was just scrolling through the comments, and I noticed someone pointed out, you know, this song sounds a lot like Gold by Owl City. And I was like, hmm. You know, recently, almost anyone did a Gold remix thingy that he sent to me. Maybe I can use that. So, in about a day, it was literally like the fastest recording ever. I mashed up the two songs, changed a little bit with the vocal melody, and mixed it. That's really cool. Actually, uh, I don't think we've anybody or had anybody that really has talked about doing mashups. So, what actually goes into doing a mashup? I haven't done a whole lot, obviously, because, um, well, I just started out with music. But 
Usually it just comes on a whim for me, I guess. I'll be listening to a song and I'll just think, okay, this sounds like something else. And I'll have to like surf through my iTunes library to find it and drive myself crazy because I never know what it is. <laughs> and then it's really just a matter of trying to figure out if you can sing it in the same key, if you can sing it with the same notes. Sometimes you have to change a few notes here or there or mess around. Like I think in Faster Than You Know, I think I did have to mess around a little bit with when one of the choruses comes in or something. But that was all just on a whim. So there's not a whole lot I can explain about it, except I heard it. I found something else like it. I made it happen. So did you have to do any key shifting or, or rhythm changing or anything like that? How did you actually go about mashing them up? I always have to do key shifting. Otherwise, my voice sounds terrible. <laughs> well, that's good. That actually makes the song more your own, I feel like. I know the feeling. Yeah, that's what I try to do, because like I hear musicians say Mando Pony who can sing in any key and somehow make it sound good. And I'm like, oh, I want to do that. And then I try it, and I'm like, uh, no, thank you. It just comes with having range. That's all it is. And people can extend their range through exercises and stuff, but it just takes time. Speaking of exercises, kind of makes me think, Fritzy, have you ever had any traditional teachings? Have you ever taken any music classes or anything like that? Actually, no, I have not. I've never taken any vocal classes. I'd like to someday because I know that they are very helpful. They are indeed very. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I've heard a lot about how helpful they are, but I've actually never really had the chance because I kind of live about two hours away from the nearest city that might have someone who teach that sort of thing. So it's really tough to actually get out anywhere and get some vocal training. Ouch. That said, have you ever gone out and sought out any kind of books or other resources for teaching you about singing? That is something actually I've also never done. I never thought of that. Then there's also singing in your car, too. That's also a good training. Or, or, hold on, S stay with me here. There's a little thing that I've heard of. It's called the internet. Hey. <gasps> yeah, <that's true>. oh. <laughs> hey. What is that? And YouTube. YouTube, there's online singing lesson places. There's actually, I, <laughs> I linked Final Draft something after the whole uh, live stream Debacle. thingy with <laughs> him singing Journey. Yeah, I linked him a thing where it was like this guy's YouTube courses for how to sing like certain musicians. And I found one oh for Journey. Oh my god, wow. <laughs> but yeah, the guy was a great singer though. So check that out. I can probably find a link later. I still recommend picking up one or two good books because usually internet things are more abbreviated than what you'll get in a book. So it gives you good background. Yeah. And then when you find these internet sources, you kind of have better understanding going into That's them. That's true too. And books don't disappear when your fire or when your fire <laughs> goes out. Books don't disappear when your electricity goes <laughs> out. Well, I mean, it, it is Saskatchewan. So, I mean, you know, half the yeah. year he's probably using a diesel generator anyway. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> uh, but speaking about vocal stuff, and you did mention Mando Pony, one of the things I noticed is that with a lot of your vocals, you sound surprisingly similar to Mando Pony. Have you ever considered impersonating him or doing a straight cover of one of his songs or something? That was one of the first things I heard when I released my first song. It was like, dude, are you like try impersonating Mando Pony or something? And I was like, Mando Pony, who's he? <laughs> <laughs> and then i actually realized wait a minute because one of the first songs i uploaded with oxygen was actually just a smile song cover and i was like wait a minute where did i get this from i got it from mando pony who is this guy <laughs> <laughs> nice wow it's been a while since i've heard that and that actually be cool to try and cover something of mando pony and see just how much i sound like him if i sound like him at all maybe you guys are just crazy probably <laughs> hey, just go out there and do it. Yeah, well, it's just one of those things that sort of struck me. I'm like, yeah, you could do a good impression of Mando Pony. I'm like, if we ever need to like get somebody to impersonate Mando Pony on a song now for our next silly episode, <laughs> then I'll be giving you a call. <laughs> there was also another rumor, too, that I don't remember what musician told me, but that you and me sound exactly the same or like sing the same. I remember that. Somebody's going around saying that me and you sound the same and should cover something. And I was like, what? Where did this come Indeed. from? I'm so confused. Nah. 
Nah. Nah. Uh, Sorry, Snow. You may sound like Fritzy, but you don't sound <laughs> like Mando. Is that a good thing? Uh, take it as you will. I don't know. For our first song tonight, we're going to be playing Oxygen featuring Almost Anyone by Fritzy B. You're listening to Elements of Harmony on Everfree Network. Oxygen featuring almost anyone. This was also number three for the honorable mention of top ten Brony songs of November, and it was also spotlighted on EQD. So Fritzy B, would you like to talk a little bit about your inspiration in this song? Yeah, actually, um, this one was a it's kind of a weird one, I guess, for a first song for a Brony musician, because um, like you'd think, I guess I wanted to um tell a story in the song that was from the show, but I had a lot of friends that were going through some tough times at the time that I was writing the song. And a lot of people write songs about like, when you're going through tough times, reach into your inner soul and stuff. and has all this, all these really deep, deep things. And I was thinking, you know, what gets me through a lot of tough times is just the fact that the world is beautiful. 
And you go outside, you see it's beautiful outside. Why be so sad and when we live in such a wonderful world? And I came up with this sort of fanfic sort of idea for a sea pony being brought up out of the depths of the ocean to see the world by a pegasi or an earth pony or something like that. I guess it was sort of my own personal fanfic that came into my mind. So I find that really interesting. Your time about the inspiration was you going outside in our world and saying this is a beautiful world because a lot of people see Equestria as the beautiful world. Our world is ugly. So how do you relate that into, you know, Equestria, our world, making that relation? Hmm, that's a good question, actually. I guess I wasn't really thinking a whole lot about um, the equestrian world at the time. I guess it was my first song and stuff, and I didn't know a lot about bronies or ponies in general. But I guess it could also be used as a sort of get off the computer, stop watching ponies. There's a world out here as well! I, honestly, I really love that because I've always, you know, seen our world as beautiful if people just opened their eyes and went out. Oh yeah, I mean, that is definitely a meaning that can be taken away from I like a lot of my songs, I also like to make it so you can take away multiple meanings from any one song and they can be interpreted differently. At least that's what I try. I'm not sure if I always achieve that. Yeah. I think that, that gets across pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's always a good thing to strive to. I don't know, it's kind of a hard exercise. And like Tim said, a lot of people sort of retreat into the world of Equestria because the real world isn't that great at times. But I mean, I can relate to the whole finding beauty in the real world thing because there's always something that happens in your real life that makes your life better. Like even when it comes to the internet and stuff like that, meeting people on the internet is still something that happens in your real life. It basically is. I mean, just because you're talking to someone in the computer doesn't mean like they're not in the real world. <laughs> yeah. Tell my mom that. Yeah, that person is saying they're living, breathing, eating, sleeping, everything you're doing. Drinking, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I'm doing. It just means that they live very far away from you. Yeah, and we have this amazing technology that exists in this modern age to be able to do that. And not even so much that stuff, but I mean, especially living in a place like Saskatchewan, and specifically like a rural part of Saskatchewan, being able to take pleasure in really simple things that kind of happen in the real world is, I don't know, it, it might have something to do with being an artist, either both visual and or musical, or just like having that sort of right-brained artistic thing. But I remember being really sad at, at winter one point, standing at a bus stop, and I just remember looking up and looking at the orange streetlight with the snow falling gently in front of it, and I'm like, that's really beautiful. I feel slightly better now. But yeah, just little stuff like that. Oh yeah, I love those little moments. It's often what inspires a lot of my songs. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I'm deep in contemplation right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like we're just like imagining everything. Oh, yeah, no, I'm thinking about... Well, I'm left brain dominant and I still have those moments where it's just like, there's something really simple and just beautiful out there. Yeah. Well, there's a reason that I love hiking, like on top of mountains. Mm-hmm. It's not just hiking to hike, it's to hike to get the view. It's, it's really cool. It's the best form of exercise. Yeah. So just kind of moving back into the music stuff a little bit, how exactly would you classify what you do? Because you are, I, I suppose, mainly a vocal artist, but you also, you know, work on your own songs. So to what extent would you consider yourself, say, like an electronic musician or a DJ or whatever you would consider it? Like what kind of genre would you place yourself in? That is a tough one. I'm actually not sure because, like I said, it was really in November that I decided I have to learn to make music. That was the first time I'd really touched any sort of music program. So up to this point, all I've been doing is a combination of I've been doing lyrics and vocals and melodies. Like I'll come up with melodies for songs from time to time. And yes, having a Mac makes it hard to work in a lot of programs. You don't have to say it. I already heard it. God, yeah. <laughs> but I've been getting like demos for different programs and stuff and I've been working on a lot of my own stuff. I haven't really released anything because I want it to be good before I do. But I'm very much in a learning process. And shout out right now to Synthis, Sam Synthis, who has been helping me a ton with that. If it weren't for him, I'd know nothing about music. Nice. So what kind of role did he play in helping you along? It's really, really helpful to have someone who's been doing music for a long time to refer back to and ask questions. I mean, like, at first I was kind of worried because I was getting to know all these musicians. I was thinking, oh man, I'm going to be bothering them so much. They're all going to hate me. Uh. But other musicians, too, that I've been meeting, like, um, Forever Free Brony and 
Slipstorm, they're all like really open to hearing what you have to say and teaching you to use these programs and helping you out with things like mixing, which I am still very much working on. Yeah. And I think, I think everyone works on that forever. Yeah, those guys are insane. Like, I actually remember the other day, I came up with a chord progression and we were in a Skype call and Slipstorm was in there and he listened to it and he was like, holy crap, dude, we're making this a thing. And I went and took a shower and I came <laughs> back and he had 12 bars completely like, like 12 bars of orchestral, just completely laid out on SoundCloud. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like these guys are insane and they're so like down to earth and good guys. Yeah, he literally did that in like, 20 minutes yeah i love how open the um brony community is. i mean when i was doing covers a while back long before i became a brony it was very much just me throwing stuff online and not much was really happening there was no community with music and mm -hmm. when i started releasing brony music i found all these people were like willing to help and listen and just be friends it's like man i love this community musicians are people too yeah <gasps> no and it's not even that, it's just that musicians in the brony community are like some of the most accepting, well, awesome people who will not only spend time to listen to the stuff that you've done, but also spend time to help you improve. And it's like the brony way. Basically, yeah, we're just all just helping each other out. We're just all here. Yeah, well, we're all in this together, oh, no. right? So... Not that song. <laughs> no. It's gonna be stuck in my head. <laughs> I'm glad that was killed before it happened. Yeah, I'm not going to sing it. Don't worry. Pretty much. I I'm so glad it was dead and gone, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> dead and gone. So you've collabed a lot with almost anyone, is that correct? Yes, I've actually, I collab with him more than anyone else. There's at least six or seven songs that haven't even been released yet that we've done together. So how do you guys divide your work when you do that? Who does what? Usually what happens is almost anyone will come up since most of the stuff that we've been working on is going on his new album that he's been working on for a while now. So he'll come up with a demo. He'll usually come up with the melody and like put some stuff together and he'll send it my way and say, okay, maybe this needs lyrics or this needs maybe a different vocalist to work on it. And what I usually do is I write the lyrics and then either I sing it or I go to find somebody else who would be good at singing it. And I also help out a little bit with the production. I'm still learning, obviously, but he'll ask like, hey, how's this chord progression or how's this melody or does this sound too convoluted? I help him out in that sense as well. Sort of like a pre-listener, kind of. Yeah, that sort of thing. Hmm. And you said that you write the lyrics a lot, so does that come naturally to you? Yeah, like, I really enjoy writing lyrics. Sometimes it's really tough, but I think that's my favorite form of expression, is just sitting down and putting words together that rhyme and sound pretty. <laughs> yeah, no, it's one of the things that I've always struggled with was lyrics, and I don't know if it's just because I don't have a lot to say or what, but when I am inspired, they come great. But when I'm not inspired, it's really, really hard to, like, just come up with stuff for it. So do you have any kind of process? I do have a little thing that I do when I'm not inspired. Because when I'm inspired, I'm writing all these things. I'm trying to be able to maybe a little bit deep, maybe imply some cool meanings in my songs. But sometimes I do get uninspired and I want to get out of a slump. So what I usually do is I pull up maybe an old demo instrumental or something that almost anyone sent me or anything like that. And I write something completely stupid. I just come up with the craziest idea and just write as fast as I can anything that rhymes. Just go. Orange. Orange. <laughs> and, and then I just sort of call it, okay, that's a wrap. Probably will never release it, but I'm back in it. That's a wrap. Huh. That's really interesting because I've always found it easy to just play a chord progression and just spit out really, really stupid lyrics, which is kind of what I do on the Philly cast sometimes. Is just start playing something and just start singing about, you know, uh, you know, somebody walking down the street and tripping over a banana peel and smashing their face into some bicycle rack or something. <laughs> and it just comes out as like this nonsense lyric thing, but it's, I don't know why it happens. It's just easy to sing about stuff that doesn't matter. Yeah, it's fun. And so hard to write about stuff that does matter. <laughs> actually, on that topic, I do actually have a song that I'm still working on that sort of came to me in about, I think it was 10 minutes I wrote it. It was ridiculous. The, about, you know, the, um, the Canterlot <laughs> wedding episodes, the bridesmaids, <laughs> I was searching around YouTube and I found, you know, I haven't seen any songs about the bridesmaids. 
So I sat down and wrote in about 10 minutes, this really ridiculous song about how evil and awesome the bridesmaids are. Wow. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to releasing that, because despite it being like a 10-minute flunk, I'm still like more proud of that than like anything else. Well, speaking of being proud of things, out of all the stuff that you have out right now, what are you most proud of? Hmm. It's actually kind of hard to think about that because I like Oxygen, obviously mm -hmm. the first one, and I also really like Fort Hope because Fort Hope was actually the first song I ever wrote. Oh, really? And I actually wrote that around the same time as Oxygen, but I never released it because for some reason at the, at the time I was just not happy with it. But then after a time, I just grew so attached to it and I was like, I got to release this because now I love it. And it being my first original song ever... I guess it just holds that special place in my heart or something. Is that that's how they say it? Yeah. Like a child, little baby, little, yeah. little lyrical song baby. But yeah, even looking back now, though, being such a new musician, I still notice the problems with like all my songs because I'm still learning and oh my gosh, the highs were too high in this part or the lows were too low. And uh... yeah, you'll always have that. That's going to be uh, that'll never go away. That's part of being an artist, yeah. That's how you keep improving. So what was it like when you made Paladin? Because when we first heard that song in uh, our second live stream when I requested it, it sounded really good, so what did you like put into it? Paladin is another interesting one because... Actually, I didn't mention this about Oxygen, but both Oxygen and Paladin were inspired by a friend of mine's novel in progress as well. An additional inspiration to all the other stuff I mentioned. And Paladin was actually originally a poem that was written by that person about their book. And they sort of said, you know, I'm never going to do anything with this. You should find something to do with this. And I was like, huh, okay. So I grabbed the lyrics off them and I was like, well, what can I sing this to? And I was searching through some really old files from the old days. And I found an old conversation I had with um, a guy by the name of ENV, or Envy. And this is like ancient. I was like, hey, can I sing lyrics over this song of yours? And he was like, yeah, sure. And I never did anything with it because I procrastinated a lot back then. And then I just dragged that up and I was like, hey, I never did do anything with this. And now I'm inspired. Yeah, ponies. Mmm. Actually, one more ironic thing with that is I found out not long after I did that, that since I had never been in contact with ENV except for that one time, not sure if this is confirmed or not, but I'm pretty sure he's actually a professional DJ now. So he actually released Paladin under another name under his DJ name. So why is YouTube saying that it's by another musician? Wait, I gotta do my research. What's going on? So that took me by surprise. I'm all the sky as rainbow clouds deck the winds in my yard. speaking of friends and songs and collaborations and stuff you did hint earlier that you might be doing something with somebody that may possibly be here well i think we did mention before something about people mentioning me and snowblitz sounding alike dr niblitz <laughs> <laughs> Edit that out. No, never. So, Fritzy, tell us about that. Yes, and I was thinking, gee, if I ever got on to Elements of Harmony... Yes. Boop, boop, it's happening. <laughs> maybe we could do something for that. You know, maybe a cover or a parody. An interesting, silly song. ba 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 About EOH. About EOH. It is about EOH. Wait, it's about EOH? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've already seen the lyrics before we ever put him on the interview. <laughs> oh, no. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> oh, boy. And I wrote it in about, like, five minutes, so... Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, so it's already written. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Yeah, I think I was talking with you a little bit before in the video. You said it's pretty much done, just gotta get Snowy Bee's lyric, or singing my recording yeah yes i'm still waiting on that sir i'm gonna do it since we don't have it right this second so we can't include it for the second song break because snowblitz hasn't recorded it yet get on it snowblitz i'm busy with other things 
With what? With EOH? We'll make you do this. Do it or you're fired. <laughs> no, I have a life. It's called the real world. Didn't we discuss it like 30 yeah. minutes ago? Yeah, we discussed the real world. <laughs> we just discussed this. Our friends online are still in the real world. <sighs> Seriously, we just discussed this. All right, so it's about time to go into our second song break. And since we don't have the snowy bee, fritzy bee, awesome parody thing yet, which we might have for the end of the episode, we'll be playing a song that could potentially be a preview of something that may be released on the YouTubes sometime soon or potentially in uh, almost anyone's album. That'll be coming up hopefully within, what, the next couple of months? Hopefully. Awesome. So this is Campers by Fritzy Beat featuring almost anyone. You're listening to Elements of Harmony on Everfree Network. Fritzy, I think you told him to me earlier that this wasn't the original meaning of the song, but it had something to do with Diamond Tiara and playing Call of Duty. Nah. Yes, actually, this song was written originally a long time ago by almost anyone himself. And when he originally sent it to me and said, you know, I want to make this a real thing and actually, like, do the song, I was listening to it and I was thinking, this could mean something in Pony Fanon too. So I ended up developing this idea that it's some sort of Diamond Tiara <laughs> song camping in Call of Duty or something like that. And I don't know, maybe Button Mash could be thrown in there somewhere. <laughs> but yes, because I'm thinking, you know, if they had video games and Diamond Tiara was playing video games, she would be a camper. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she would. She does seem like a yeah. dirty camper. She would be that pony. Yeah. She's camping with an AWP. Ugh. She ops me. 
Sorry, I went a little more old school than Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> that is really old school. Oh boy. Um, but I don't know. When when I was listening to this song, immediately it, it, two things struck me. One uh, that Six said that he was dancing uh, during the the, sh- the song that we featured uh, during our live episode. I was dancing during that one too. And I was going to say during this one too. This is a danceable song for sure. <laughs> And the second thing that really hit me too was the Mando Pony thing again. You sound so much like Mando Pony in this song, in the sense that it's sort of like the more like the quieter acoustic stuff that he does, like uh, oh, that derpy song, whatever it's called. Hey there, Mister P, how's it going in Equestry? Okay, not that one. <laughs> that's that's my derpy song. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yes, it sounded quite a bit like Mando, so it's it's funny that that kind of works into vocals. Kind of funny you bring up Mando again, actually, because when I first thought of that meaning behind the song, I was like, hey, there's no Diamond Tiara songs. Yeah, this can be like a new thing, finally, that hasn't been done before. And then like a few weeks later, oop, Mando Pony releases a Diamond Tiara song. <laughs> Beat me by that much. <laughs> <laughs> Thunder stolen. Yeah, he does everything. Like, every time when someone thinks of uh, a song, like, he does it, like, two days later. It's true. I'm actually kind of interested that you guys think that Fritzy sounds like Mandapony. Like, I can hear that they have similar vocal registers, but I still think the way that they intonate... I would say the range. The range is very close. Yeah, no, yeah, range and uh, whatever the word that I just said. Register. Register, yeah. The tone. It's similar, but you're right. The intonation is a little bit different. No, oh, yeah, there's a slight difference, but everything is cl- oh, and most of it is close. So since we were talking about the voices, I think for our tech talk, we're going to try to talk a little bit about voice, voice quality and singing in general, I guess. In other words, vocals. Yeah, all about vocals. Yay. I know about that. I know. This is finally, this is something that I know. Good. Snowblitz, start us off with something. All right. Well, let's see. Where to begin? Well, the thing is, you have to know what type of vocal range you really are when you're for your speaking. For chorus, there are typically four. Well, in SATB style notation stuff like that, but there are more. So, quick quick explanation of that. You said SATV. Quick, explain that. Not to be confused with SCTV, which is a Canadian comedy show that happened in the 80s. <laughs> SATB, not V. Yeah, that's what I said. I didn't say V. I, I said V because I was, I, th- I was thinking SCTV. Yeah. Well, actually, there's two Bs. The major ones are soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. The one that's not really mentioned is in between tenor and bass is baritone, which it's not really mostly mentioned a lot, but (laughs) it is part of the vocal range. There are also things like second soprano and... Then, yeah, there's a mezzo soprano, and then there's something for a tenor as well. Yeah, there is a term for um, something higher than a tenor. I'll see if I can look it up. Oh, counter tenor. That's it, yes, counter tenor. Yeah, counter tenor. Yeah, the thing is, it's not really mostly mentioned counter tenor because it's very rare, I hear. Yeah, like DB Pony could almost get into that range. DB Pony is probably a counter tenor. DB Pony can just, he can hit so many notes that I didn't think were even possible. (laughs) I know, right? Yes. So I guess that plays into knowing your vocal range plays into where you sing your songs, which you said, Fritzy, that you do a lot of work with. When we were discussing the mashup that you do work with taking things out of the original key and putting them into a key that's more comfortable for you. Oh yeah, I mean like if you want something to sound its best, you gotta sing within your limits. If you can't sing, uh, let's say, I don't know, go out on a limb here, gangster rap, then you don't sing, you might, maybe you can try it, but you don't really sing gangster rap. You learn on improving on where you already know you can do it at least a little bit. So I have a much higher voice. So I try to work more on doing that than singing really low. John Cage. Well, and while singing outside of your range is a good way to expand your vocal range, if you do it wrong, it could also hurt your voice. And you sound good where you're most comfortable, usually. So I guess practice-wise. Yeah. Yeah, I admit I've tried singing. I think it was a long time ago. I tried singing Screamo, and I ruined my voice for like a week. Don't just jump into that sort of thing. You gotta ease into that sort of thing. Yeah, Screamo's still a mystery for me. 
And you really need to practice proper technique for that, or you will hurt yourself, as Fritzy was talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and if it's not for you, it's not for you. You can't just do it in the day and just say, like, okay, I've gotten Screamo done. It's really difficult. It depends on the person. This is something that I actually want to touch on, even though it doesn't have a lot to do with what Fritzy does, but since we have Tim here that can kind of explain this stuff a little bit, and this does definitely play into vocals in general, for those it's that want to, to do the rougher vocals too. and I mean, the screams and stuff like just, that, you can just how does one on. go about starting to do that? Learn to breathe properly. It is all about the proper breath. The sound is not made in your throat. It is, it's a very powerful push of air from your diaphragm when you're making those sounds. So when you're talking about breathing, you're talking about breathing out? Yes. Okay. Well, not just that, but also try to figure out what vocal range you are in. Well, for screams? Well, I wasn't talking about screams. I wasn't talking, well, like, you know. We're talking about screams, which, I mean, that kind of extreme vocal style, it's not so much about range. And really, actually, from what I found personally, with the lower growls, you aren't pushing as much air through. It's just about redirecting where on the soft palate you're hitting and it's hard for me to explain it it's all about a feeling and there's lots of practice and honestly if you don't know proper singing techniques you're probably going to be hurting yourself while you're trying to do a more extreme vocal style which is why some of the best screamers i've heard out there like michael ackerfeld and stuff are fantastic singers well, I think we should stay away from like the scream stuff. Like we don't really know. Well, you know a little bit more than us about the scream out stuff, but I know a little bit more about like the regular scales and just regular singing. Regular singing. Well, in other words, the basics. Yeah. This is why I push people toward references because this is something where you will hurt yourself if you're going about it wrong. Long story short, we are not vocal trainers, so we can't really tell people how to go about starting to scream because our advice may be wrong and they may hurt their voice. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, out of all the guests that we've had, we haven't had a lot of pop guests. We've had metal guests, which scream. We've had rock guests, which kind of scream. It's just pushing it. You get that grungy effect on your voice. But I guess one of the things that would work for the Tech Talk that we could talk about a bit is the breathing, which we mentioned a little bit with Feather, but Starlight, you said that there's like exercises that you can do. Yeah. A lot of exercises that I did came from when I would play trumpet in band, where there's a lot of stuff where you take in deep breaths, let them out, and then doing things like breathe in for eight beats and then just sizzle them out for 16 beats and just a lot of different things like that. So... To explain that real quick, so you can do like a in, like you, you breathe in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then you go sss, three, four, well, five, six, Well, for sizzle, seven. I mean like sss, Oh, that? Okay. I should say pulse, yeah. No, okay. I so mean, just a lot of different types sss, of things like that. For eight beats. Or for, do you do it for eight beats out, or do you do it for as long as you can? Honestly, I am, I was hoping you wouldn't ask me this because I have not done breathing exercises in the past year like I should be. Oh. Bom, bom, bom. But you don't do it for as long as you can. You do it to a set amount, and a lot of times I would increase that amount and things like that. And one of the things is if you're doing it for a shorter amount, a good thing that I learned while in marching band was learning how to use all your breath in that short amount. So if you're doing only eight beats, get it all out in that eight beats. That's an interesting concept, actually. Yes. Yeah, the more breath control you have, the better a singer you're going to be. I'm actually interested. Fritzy, you are primarily a vocalist. Do you do any exercises before you do singing or like have some tea with honey or something like that? Or do you just kind of do it? I did. Originally, I just sort of did it. But over time, you learn a few of the tricks. You read up on them. Like what I do is I usually only record at night in the evening. That way my voice is warmed up a bit over the day. I sing during the day a lot just to myself, just to warm it up for when I do record. And then before I record, I often actually just take a glass of hot water. It's probably a good idea. Yeah, and I also, I also of days that I am... um recording i try to avoid drinking things like milk and stuff because that tends to i don't know the term for it but your words start to slur a bit more for some reason when you drink milk before recording well if well if you eat or drink dairy it basically flims up the yeah. Voice yeah yeah a little yeah. bit 
Yeah, it coats your throat and it makes it a little bit slipperier and stuff like that. Well, I want to say coat is the right term because honey coats your throat, but it does it in a good way for singing. But yeah, getting that flemminess from the dairy, the coagulation or whatever, it's really bad mm-hmm. for your voice. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. One of the things you can do to, if, if you have and you're trying to get rid of that stuff, one of the things you can do is eat an apple. Apples will actually get rid of that. Oh, really? I have never heard that before. Oh, yeah. Citric acid in general will, I don't even know what the word is, kind of get rid of the dairy effect. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's same thing Same thing. how with, uh, like you said, you drink warm water. You can also yeah, mix lemon, in with yeah, uh, yeah. lemon juice as well. Citrus is a double-edged sword. If it works for you, great. But um, uh, I really recommend honey with warm. Yeah, citrus in large amounts. Yeah. Yeah, it's too much citrus would actually damage. Well, not damage, but like, yeah, it dries out the throat a little bit. It's better to have like a little bit. Yeah, I guess con- I don't know if I'm wrong on this, but um, chemical compound wise, uh, dairy products are slightly basic and acids neutralize what's the word neutralize yeah they neutralize basic or bases so uh, yeah and both bases and acids can be damaging but when they're used together they will neutralize this has been the elements of chemistry with six string my name is professor six string hello and not only uh dairy messes with you sugar also messes with you a little bit too Especially processed sugars, especially yes. those. And, um, yeah, sugar is another one. The thing that I hate to admit <laughs> is alcohol is killer for your voice. <laughs> Do not drink if you're going to be recording. That reminds me of Cyril when I first was getting to know him and I was talking to him about his voice. And I'm like, so how did you get your voice to be like this? And he's like, well, a lot of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. Isn't that what that, uh, the movie announcer guy says? The in a world guy. Uh, Don LaFontaine? Yeah. Yeah, we're we're not recommending that people go do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do not do that. Yeah. No, but um, everyone does have their vices and some people won't give them up. And if you're a singer that smokes or drinks or both, make sure you are drinking a lot of water. Yeah, I was just about to say, whenever I did any kind of uh, musicals or anything, the um, vocal director would always say that you need to be drinking eight to ten glasses of water a day. Yeah, the thing that I always heard was take your body weight, divide that by two, and add it to 64. And that is how many ounces of water you should have. And if you drink or smoke, you need to increase that amount. Yeah. Wow, math. Or wait, maybe it's just take your weight, divide by two, unless if it's under 64, then at least 64. Dang it, I thought that I could escape math with music. Uh, (laughs) Nope. Stop, stop bringing it in. No, no. Music is entirely math. Hmm. Well, especially especially singing, because your vocal cords, they're a living instrument, essentially. So it's a lot of chemistry and a lot of biology and a lot of science-y stuff. And music at its core is mathematics and waveforms and weird things that are crazy, but they all come together and they work and it's awesome. No, they, yeah, when it comes to like music, it's a lot of mathematics and a lot of science. Well, in this case, it's more about um, a body mass and how much it takes to hydrate that body mass. But yeah. Yeah. Like I said, biology. Yep. There's also another interesting tip, too, for vocals. I learned if you, like, stretch your neck, like, a couple of times, you can also stretch the vocal cords, like, exercising them. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like how you look up with your neck? It's almost like working out because it's also a muscle. You can stretch out your vocal cords. Interesting. I've never heard that before. Yeah, I actually learned that from, uh, oh god, was it from Lee Togar? Please tell me. I think it was. All right. Mm-hmm. I think Someone so. Someone notable. I, I, some voice actor. Mm-hmm. We are starting to run out of a little bit of time, so I'm going to move on to our final question for you, Fritzy. Now, this is a little bit different, because a lot of people we've asked this question have been doing music for a little bit longer, but you're pretty new to the fandom and to making music. But in your short time that you have been here, what advice can you give? Have you received any advice from anybody that you would like to share? Hmm. Very good question. I honestly have to say, put your stuff out there. I mean, like, I know I was scared when I put my first song out. I mean, I didn't really know much about the Brony fandom, but I was still like, I'm putting my voice out there. People are going to be critical. Ah! 
But to see the um, people in the fandom that they give such good constructive criticism, you learn so much just by putting yourself out there and like leaving it for being critiqued and stuff. And it really does help to get that second opinion. I'd never gotten that any time before. And definitely to have that from all these other great musicians in the fandom. And they're all, they're all willing to help. They're all willing to go right out of their way to critique your song, tell you where you need to improve, tell you where you're already good, and what to focus on and all that. And it is a huge help to have that knowledge at your disposal. Thank you. All right. Well, that's very helpful. And thank you very much for coming out. And since you are a longtime listener of our show, I have one last question for you. Ooh, special question. Base or mini fridge? Mm. Base player or mini fridge? Base player or mini fridge? Uh, I knew this was coming. Why didn't I think of it ahead of time? <laughs> <laughs> mini fridge. Mini fridge. Bass player! Bass player! Zeta only says that because he's just barely got a- well, not just barely. He's had a bass for a little while now. I've had it for a month. Yeah. Come on, des- decide. <laughs> Do it. Do it. <laughs> Do it. it? Oh, the spotlight. <clears throat> the pressure. Yeah. Do it's it. It's too hard. Ah! Bass player. Oh! Yes! Really? Yay! I can die with that. Alright then. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that answer. Yeah, well, and thank you very much for coming out and joining us tonight. And this week, coming up on Everfree Network, on Wednesday we have KPNY at 7 p.m. and Into the Spotlight at 9 p.m. On Thursday we have Sketchy Sounds at 3 p.m., Equestria Unlimited at 7 p.m., and all of these times are in Central. Until next time, this is... Forest Rain. Snow Blitz. Six Dream. Seda Prime. And Starlight Ironhoof. Goodbye for now. Hello, I'm Snow Blitz and I host EOH. Hello, I'm Fritzy Beat and I make music all day. Oh, hey, then would you like to come on our show? You mean that bunch of music bimbos on the radio? We could talk to you, no thanks, and make fun of you. Wait, what? Pick apart your music Why? Because Because That's why Why would I join in on that? Slip could give you a big hat The forest scares me I'm not sure if you really want that Fritzy, it is Snow Blitz again I thought I told you in Jungle Monster not interested But this time I have come with some leverage Wait, what is that? Now Sikkim Lars this giant goldfish Now that seems a bit unfair So just come without a care Then will you get it off me? Crawl into its gills, we'll see Are all you people crazy? What if I'm just too lazy? I'll just get stolen to wake you up with the metal songs Okay, now Fritzy, do you finally give up? I think that Zap Zeta was just a bit too much. I know you'll love it, this chance is really rare. I guess so long as Forrest doesn't swear while on the air. I promise this won't be hell, six might give you a countdown. Well, if you put it that way, I guess it could be quite fun. But hey, before we do that, I have one question to ask. You ask which I prefer, mini fridge or bass player?
We are done. Wee!